Hey guys, uh, it's me again, showing some of the uh, internals here. Um, yeah, sorry, I just checked the, the video had a terrible frame rate. Um, I still did upload it, so you still see it on my YouTube, but I need to get a better video uh, screen recording software if I want to record game engines running, I guess, because it, it, it doesn't really give that good of a frame rate. Um, anyway, let's start. So, just a quick um, sum up so of, of the stuff that I'm going to show here. I know it's not an uh, in-depth tutorial as I, I don't consider myself like being at the point where I can make tutorials. I'm just going to show how I did stuff and maybe the pros can give me feedback if that's uh, right or not and some ideas and whatnot. Um, so yeah, I've got like health system and pickup system in place, um, stamina bar and I've got like this little system where with the Y key you can toggle uh, between speed modes. So this is a um, fast speed mode, so the, the normal walk speed is like just jogging and if you hit shift uh, she goes to sprinting and drains the stamina bar. Um, and then we've got, if I click Y, uh, it's, not, it's not displayed anywhere, but um, basically that sets the maximum walk speed to something that basically has a player walk and you can't run, but you can like hit shift and she'll start to jog, but that's still not the speed at which uh, the stamina gets drained unless you jump, because jump obviously costs some energy. Um, I've said it in a way that jump, uh, jumping while pressing forward is going to give you this like um, forward force and if you have nothing you just jump upwards and it don't cost you any additional stamina. Um, and as you can see we've got some prints here like um, testing what objects I'm colliding with and some, some forces on the top bottom left corner. Some debug stuff um, to check different things. Um, yeah, so let's just keep, keep going. So we've got these objects here, obviously, like, if I walk into them, they're gonna kill me, and when I die, I start a, a simulation, a rectal simulation, so I can walk to this thing and it didn't do anything. Oh, no, it didn't. Yeah, so the collision is kind of, it's kind of funky. Uh, oh, where did, where did it go? Oh, there it is. Um... Yeah, but they, I mean, they, they deal, like, damage to you when you collide with them, and and then they shoot you around because you die, and you become an, a physics asset, saying it very, um, like, randomly. Then you, you have, like, fall damage. I try to set up a way that gives me, like, a, a more realistic and controllable fall damage. Um, I'm going to explain that in a bit. Um, yeah, and then if you fall too far, you just die, and you... The physics simulation starts and I think that's pretty much it there's not too much more going on here um, so let's let's look at have a look at this graph um, where is the graph here all right so we've got some collapsed load graphs here um, maybe let's start with something simple like the movement uh, I don't think I changed anything here let me just look into it. Um, yeah, nothing changed here. I mean, this is pretty much like the stuff you see in 30 tutorials out there. So uh, I don't think... Maybe people can, can tell if, if this is a very simple setup that they do in the tutorials and if you like go much crazier with it. Because I, I can imagine you could uh, go crazier with stuff like this. Um, so let's keep movement out. Oops, uh, I closed my... They totally did that. Ah, uh, here we go. Okay. So we've got movement. Um, the stamina. Let's, let's check the jump as well. So the mouse input, for example, is also this fairly regular one. Um, nothing, nothing really great in here. Just gonna leave that on. Why does it do that? I don't want it to zoom out like that. Notes. So the mouse input is boring, it's not gonna cover that. Um, let's check the hit collision. 
because that's basically these like rotating and crunching objects that you saw this is um, how I collide how I determine the damage that they do to me because um, I was trying to find out I, so I used the event hit um, and I was trying to figure out uh, a way to use the normal impulse but apparently you can only use it if your physics simulation is turned on for both actors uh, which I don't want uh, right because I don't want to have uh, physics working because it's gonna like disable the input as far as I know um, so I, I tried to hack it in a way where it like worked um, and this is really really hacky like my even I think this is like a super cheap solution my works um, in, a, in a way so basically um, on hit um, we get the other components and we get the this we get the name of it um, that's basically what you saw like on the top left that little print statement and the only thing that I'm just doing is a substring comparison and if there's any um, and if the substring that I'm using is like a specific string that it has in every of my collision objects of my like deadly objects um, if it finds that it's gonna run the health uh, like it's gonna deal some damage to my health um, yeah, we've got this like little print spring debugger uh, I, I run it through like a do once um, a flow, a flow controller with a delay of one second so it will only it would only print one thing each second um, or it had like a reset time of one second just that debug thing um, yeah so then for example that's like two different things you know we, we got these rotating ones that like speed around on those I pretty much like however I touch them I pretty much want to have damage from them so I had three of them because I couldn't find a way let me just show that I couldn't find a way to um, get a nice you know because obviously the, because this rotates the outside point is gonna rotate and, and move way faster than the inside point right so if you somehow manage to get to the inside this is going to deal less damage than this and to do that I parented like three cubes underneath the object and named them specifically and um, which is the name that we see here and so basically based on these things I deal like specific amounts of damage which you can see here so the inner one gives uh, five damage then the auto uh, the medium one ten and the outermost fifteen because a player has 12 health the if, if I get hit by the outer one it's bound to kill me um, so that, that's pretty cheap and then I, I just uh, end in this custom event for check health which is uh, checks if my health is, is below uh, is above zero and if not it just kills the character and runs the physics simulation which we uh, saw later um, so then the these other ones the, the like so we got these rotating ones and then we got these ones which do like the crushing All right Bam. Um, so these ones obviously uh, they may have different speeds you know and maybe they like stay there for a while and then I don't want to die if I just touch them you know they, they, I only, they only need to damage me if they hit me from top down so what I did here was um, I get the hit normal which is basically the norm. I don't really know what it is. Um, I tried to like look up for the documentation, but this link like don't work. Um, but anyway, I, I, by experimenting around it, it, it returned the value that I wanted it to return, which is basically like I guess it's like the normal of the surface at the point of touch, um, or the normal of my character capsule, collision capsule, whatever. It it worked. So I get that normal and I run um, dot product and uh, do I have a product? I should run dot product somewhere yeah this is the dot product node exactly so I get the normal and I dot product it against um, the the world down axis right so z axis is pointing up on game engines so I, 
I was quite afraid that this would mean lots of issues with my Maya rigs, but it imported completely fine and didn't have to do anything. Anyway, so when I compare that with the well down, and the dot product is a super cool operation. Um, if two vectors are parallel, it's going to give you a result of one, and if they are um, opposite, it's going to give you minus one. So it's science, which is useful, but I, not, I'm not gonna, I didn't use it here. Um, then, uh, obviously, if the if so basically if, if my value is greater than 0.75, which is like roughly what I want to be, like you know, it's like it's going to be a fairly top-down hit if it's if it's this value. And only then, um, so basically, and, and then I run this through an AND operator and see if the if the substring matches, and if it does, then I'm going to deal 15 health and kill my character, and then that's it. So that's pretty much it. Um, it's super hacky. I, I mean, if someone has like better ways, um, please explain, because this was like it was fun to to, to like come up with this solution, but it, it feels really dirty. Um, so if someone has tips about that, I'm all ears. Um, fall damage calculation, we can go over this one. Um, so basically, if, if you look into my variables, uh, my falling, there's quite a few things going on here. Because um, I wanted to make like a little customizable modular, I don't know if modular is the right way, but I wanted, um, you know, like to to tweak specific values for specific characters and whatnot. So we got, for example, start fall height and end fall height. These ones uh, I only use to debug. Um, so I don't really use these ones. So basically the ones that I use is min fall damage height and max fall damage height. And, and because I deal my damage uh, on a percent basis, so that um, if my character has lots of health, obviously um, his min max I, I could raise them up, but I would still want them to just die at a specific fall height, because they you're supposed to just die. I mean, you could have a really strong armor, you would still die. Um, so I have these two. So starting from the min fall height, uh, I'm going to explain that later. So it goes to the map range clamp node, which is really useful here. Um, it basically just remaps the range of the of, of my fall height. Um, then we go fall damage resistance so this is the attribute that I would tweak uh, according to the character like armor or resistance to fall damage you know I, I wanted to do, add like stats you know like RPG stats and so this is the one that gets multiplied against to dampen the fall damage if, if need be and then apart from that I also calculate a min and max fall damage velocity um, why I do that is because uh, in, th in this level there is no such situation but maybe the character falls from like really high onto a soft ground something like that and it like decelerates it before it hits or uh, i don't know there's like an, an air stream that like has the character like, gently land or something like that it could be many situations where you have like a long fall height but you land with a low speed so and I don't want that to kill the character, right? So I needed I needed to measure the velocity at which it landed because it's important, right? If you if you land fast, then you're gonna take damage. If you land slowly, you're not gonna you're not supposed to take any damage. So that's what this does. Um, and then we've got the same min and max ranges here, and then we've got fall damage ratio landing velocity ratio and fall height min max ratio and these ones are applied later and uh, so yeah basically uh, what I do is I get the player character, I get the mesh, get the world location uh, and the vector and I want the Z to measure and uh, to get my fall height okay so in the event of me walking off a ledge or jumping I want to measure my start fall height, and as soon as I land, I want to measure my end fall height. Based off these two values, so I subtract these two values to get my total fall height. 
that gets into the plant node, uh, which basically just remaps the range from 0 to 1 based on my min max values here. And the same gets done for the velocity, which I get with uh, get velocity from the player character. Um, and then just pipe it to a vector length to make that vector, uh, to convert that vector into a nice float that tells you the velocity. Uh, and then obviously we just remap it back to one. Um, and then we set the, so this is setting the ratio, right? So if I land with a, let's just make it an example. So this min for the damage velocity is 1200 and the maximum is 2000. So if I land, if I hit something faster than 2000, it's gonna deal the maximum damage possible uh, from this system. And here it's like at three meters, uh, starting from a three meters fall, I start to deal them, uh, take damage, and at fifty meters, I'm gonna take the maximum damage, which is supposed to kill me. Okay. So then, so I, I, I set these ratios so in in case they are one, they should um, they should kill me like one of these. And then I've been trying like different things here, you know, I've been, first of all, I've tried to multiply these two together and then calculate the damage from that. But the problem is if you, if you have like midway damage, if, like if you have a value of about, you know, um, 300, 1,500, you know, something in between that, like 900. And here, you know, like 1,400. Um, or something like that, a thousand six six hundred, you know, like just halfway between. So these both would output zero point five, and if you multiply those two together, it would be zero point two five. So it would deal half the damage that you're supposed to be taking. So I did like um, I ran this through a lerp instead, and um, I set the like the alpha of the. Um, of the landing velocity to 0.3 because I, I figured out that with my dash jump my velocity was getting artificially increased um, so I had to reduce the impact of it but it still happens right so you're still gonna take serious damage if you land with high velocity um, and then that gets multiplied by a little com uh, by my fall damage resistance right so if my resistance is zero um, I t I'm gonna take full damage. If it's one minus one, I'm gonna take twice damage. And if it's um, and if it's one, I take no damage. Uh, it's basically just one minus this value times up by this result. Um, yeah, and then this little health set thing. Um, so basically we set the fall damage taken, uh, we compare these floats, if it's greater, if it's supposed to kill me, um, set the health to zero, which works. And if not, just subtract and check health after that. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, jump, what's there special in jump? Well, yeah, um, I'm doing these uh, combos. You know, because I, I don't have animations yet, but I'm planning to like have a really versatile animation system in here when I when I have these animations. Um, so in project settings, in the inputs, I've set up quite a few like um, combo actions. So you know, I've got jump combo forward, left, right, back. So if if any of these keys is pressed while I hit the jump key, I wanna increase the magnitude of my of my velocity vector into the into that direction or into the direction that I'm facing at which is gonna be assigned if I hit the key. So let's save that. Um, so basically uh, and then I have like I, I'm doing checking against like stamina. So if my stamina is like below above th above two because basically one of these like f uh, jump combos should cost you three stamina. So if your stamina is above two, it should do that. 
Um, uh, then obviously, if it's a uh, very, if if you're into this, if you if you get your feedback, you know how what this does. It. Yeah, it's pretty much. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. There's nothing. There's no black magic in this because I, I don't know how to apply crazy stuff here yet. You know. Um, so that's the jump. We can have a look at the walk and the sprint system. Um, so basically, I've got these like movement variables: sprinting, can sprint, walking, can move. I, I'm not using this one yet. Um, I don't know if I, if I use it. I mean, it should be useful. I created it because I wanted to use it here. By the way, uh, then we got the jump forward combo. It's the only one I'm using so far because I have got no uh, animations and uh, anim blueprint set up for like sideways movement and all that jazz. So I've only dealt with this one. Um, yeah. Oh, and I've I've got I'm watching these variables, but it like doesn't work. So I set up this my my little custom debugger window. Here. Um. So yeah, I mean, uh, if I look at this, I I need to like actually figure out myself again what I did here because I've been doing so much stuff in between. Um. So if we press sprint. Which is called by the stop sprinting event, which I can't remember where it came from. I think it, ah, it's possibly in the stamina calculation system that one calls the stop sprinting and gets it back here um, to branch if we can sprint, if not, we're not sprinting, and if yes, we are still sprinting. And that basically is going to run some timelines that are going to slow, um, like over the course of a second, increase our max walk speed. Um, to whatever a custom, uh, whatever is in here, I think it's 150 or 200. Um, and then obviously, if, if it falls, it reverses it and slo it slowly decreases it. And then the same goes for walking. Because if, if you want to walk, it's the same thing, but just offset by the negative uh, effect of, of walking instead of sprinting. Um, and then yeah, you just set the max walk speed. And obviously, if I if I sprint, I wanted to increase the acceleration. Like I'm, I'm doubling the max acceleration. And that's it. Uh, health test. I think this is the. Uh, what is this one doing? Ah oh, yeah, that was just a super early debug test. Just clicking the button and see what happens if the character dies. Nothing special. Click the button. Health gets subtracted by one. Check health. Character dies. Boom. Um, stamina system. This is cool. There's quite some stuff going on here. Um, so we get the player character. We get the velocity. And if the velocity is greater or equal to 500, I'm considering myself sprinting. Um, not sure if this is if this is a clean solution because obviously your velocity can be affected not just by your own movement. Um, so I need to. Uh, check this against something else as well which I need to probably gonna find out is if I make more tests of uh, situations and stuff anyway um, so here I call the event tick um, so for every the event tick is the event that gets executed every frame as it says here so for every frame I check if my stamina is above zero and if it is I can sprint if it isn't I can't and then I execute the stop sprinting event, and then here I I check again if is my speed above this value and am I sprinting? If yes, then I'm gonna drain stamina, right? So I'm I'm basically this is I have this attribute here called stamina drain rate, and that determines the the speed in which my stamina gets drained by sprinting. And then at the same time we've got stamina replenish rate, which is then gonna determine the speed at which it like replenishes one unit. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, camera zoom. Oh yeah, I didn't show that. Let me just show that quickly. So I hit the V key. I zoom in. And I have it in a way that 
it basically zooms in and out if I keep clicking it so it just toggles on and off and that's a pretty simple thing and then if I here if I show you I click H I lose one life every time I click H and if I click one more time I'm gonna die here it comes uh, goodbye um, bit of fun here. <laughs> um, so yeah camera zoom So we got, um, I'm hooking the camera up through a uh, spring arm, which I, I guess it's pretty regular. Um, we got the camera target arm length, which is my custom variable that, that then gets hooked up into the camera boom arm length. Um, and we got the tar uh, target arm length min and max, which is basically the values at which uh, the toggle goes back and forth, right? Um, and we got the zooming in and out, so I have this boolean to determine if my V is going to zoom in or out, and that gets basically uh, changed every time I reach a min or a max. Um, and then we got the zoom step size, which determines how far I want the, tar the arm target length to change its value. So if we hit zoom, we want to check is the camera zooming in or out? If it's zooming uh, in, you're gonna get the target arm length from the boom object and then we're doing a compare float here checking my camera target arm length against the minimum because we're zooming in and if the minimum is reached we turn this off and while it's not reached we set it we subtract the step size from it and put it back in there and then on the other hand side, obviously if it's if it's reaching the maximum value, we set it to zooming in, so it should go the other way. And while it's not, it just gets added to it. Yeah, that's pretty much it. And what I should do though is maybe from these guys then call back into this branch. Let me just check what that does, cause I, cause there's like if I click. If I reach the end, it, it won't do anything, it would just set the variable and not continue. So let's check. I'm zooming out, now I'm zooming in, now I reach the maximum, and now I zoom back out. Yeah, that's better. Because now I'm changing the variable at the same time that I'm zooming in and out. So that feels much better. Uh, yeah, see, now I improved it myself again. So that's that's pretty simple. <coughs> pretty simple. And then the last one is player death. One sec. So I made this uh, custom event, uh, check health, and that one gets called from any function that was damaged and check the health in the end um, and it basically conjugs if my health is uh, below or equal to zero then you're gonna die so if it's not my character is not dead and if it is my character is dead and while it is dead it sets zero physics to true on uh, components and meshes and that's it I'm not sure if I need both of these or just one of these I just set them both to be sure maybe I could try it later Anyway, I mean that's, that's pretty much it. Um, save that, and then um, we can have a look at the at the physics asset. So basically, what what I did here is um, there's a tutorial, lots of tutorials about this, but you click right click create physics asset, and then it makes this thing, and let's show. So then that's it. I mean, you have to like tweak these things because in my rigs it looked it, it ended up completely awful by default because you can see I've, I've got all these joints here. And it made one for like it had like 70 of these things. And when I hit simulate, my character literally exploded. Um, so in the end, I made only these few. Uh, and that's it. So when I hit simulate now, 
it looks it, it looks kind of awful but i mean the character is supposed to be dead so it, it shouldn't be it shouldn't look pretty anyway um that's how i'm excusing it right now <laughs> um but it's it's pretty fun to to like deal with this because you know you can like if you hold um control and right click you can like grab him and like really mistreat her <laughs> oh off she goes okay yeah uh, that's it for now i guess um if you have any tips or like um ideas on what what to do or like any links to sources that we could be using um please let me know um and yeah see you see you soon huh? bye